Hello and welcome to episode 80 of the Duke Basketball Report podcast. It is Monday night, August 14th, 2017. And just moments ago, Marvin Bagley III, the top recruit who most recently was in the class of 2018, uh, uh, officially became a, the top recruit in the class of 2017, and on top of that, committed to Duke University. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a number of other Duke-related news um, that came out over the last few days. Um, but before we get started, uh, I am your host this week, Sam Klein. I am joined, as always, by uh, Donald Wine in Washington, D.C. What's going on, Sam? Good day for hey, basketball. Hey. And, uh, and we got Jason Evans in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, no, no, I've I've changed my name. I'm I'm now Jason Bagley. Oh, okay, Jason Bagley <laughs> uh, of Atlanta. Um, so, so like I said, uh, Marvin Bagley just committed a few minutes ago. We we decided, I think, this morning or yesterday, that if if the, we we knew that the decision was coming today, if uh, if he was committing to Duke, we should probably get on and talk about it. So, uh, lo and behold, uh, the news the news landed our way. So, I will go to Jason first for your reaction, and and you can tell me maybe about watching tonight and and seeing him make the announcement uh, about Danny Ferry's number that he's taking, and uh, and maybe if you want to get into a little bit of Bagley's game, just give me give me all your thoughts on the Marvin Bagley situation. Well, I, I want to let you guys react to it as well. So I'm going to put Bagley's game aside for a moment. We'll come back sure. to that in a little bit. Okay. Um, I, uh, let, let's let's start with. By the way, I, it, it was it was so much fun. The DBR is such a great community, um, and, and it was so much fun to sort of be watching ESPN for this announcement, and also watching the DBR and and watching all of us on the forums talking we were talking about ESPN how much we hated ESPN cuz sports center was delayed and the Bagley announcement was delayed because of a little league world series documentary a very nice documentary by the way i enjoyed it but you know i'm sitting there watching this documentary going where's the bagley announcement i'm switching to espn2 i'm switching to espn news and there's like softball on espn8 the ocho i don't even know what was going on it's crazy, and people are all posting on the DBR. Then finally, Sports Center comes on. Bagley's there right off the top, but it's just a tease. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't give us anything, and people are just cursing ESPN. It was really, it was a great community moment. Um, but the other fun thing about the moment was, I I'm going to call you guys out. Everybody on the DBR who said it's USC, it's USC. Marvin Bagley was wearing like an orange tie almost, and people go, oh, "That looks like USC colors." It wasn't red. It wasn't gold. It wasn't USC colors. It wasn't blue because that would have given it away. It was, you know, as neutral as he could come up with, I guess. Um, but uh, so everyone was worried. Everyone seemed like they thought it was going to be USC. And then uh, he he pulled the Duke uniform out of the bag and you could immediately see that it was blue. Um, there was a heartbeat where one of my sons said it could have been UCLA blue. But I think everyone out there knew it was either going to be USC or Duke. Because Bagley wants to play for a national title. He wants to play on a team that is in the top 10 all season long. Um, USC has really risen up, and this is going to be one of their best seasons in many years this year. And so they were a viable option. Duke, of course, is always a perennial contender. We were a very, very viable option. I think UCLA, uh, their team just, they're, they're barely a top 25 team. And, and I think it would have been more difficult for him to, uh, to, to, to be on a team of national relevance um, with them. Um, uh, by the way, uh, most people will now say Duke is probably the Purdue alongside Arizona uh, as a result of us getting Marvin Bagley. But we'll get to uh, how Marvin Bagley impacts the Duke team in, in a couple of moments. It was just, it was a really fun, exciting moment. And there's one thing I want to point out. Sam brought up the Danny Ferry jersey. For folks, if you didn't hear, if you haven't seen or heard yet, uh, when Marvin Bagley announces, he pulls out a jersey number 35 and he thanks Danny Ferry and Duke for allowing him to wear number 35. That's Marvin Bagley's preferred number. It is, of course, retired at Duke because Danny Ferry wore it. By the way, I was in Danny Ferry's class. I saw Danny, Danny Ferry play for four years. I lived in the same building as Danny Ferry. I, I mean, I know him. Um, and I think it's it's great that Danny Ferry was willing to allow his number to be unretired for a special, special, special player like Marvin Bagley III. But the thing I want to point out about that is there's no way 
that Marvin Bagley had Duke go through the process of unretiring Danny Ferry's jersey without knowing that Marvin Bagley was coming to Duke. So I think the Duke staff has known about this for at least several days and props to them for not leaking anything, for letting this kid have his moment on national television, on ESPN. Um, You know, it it was great. And it's just a great time to be a a Blue Devil right now. Donald, give me what you got on it. Uh, Well, first off, I was literally standing in front of my TV about six inches away uh, in a nice defensive stance that coach would probably appreciate and was just waiting for him to say the words Duke because at first, when they said he was announcing on SportsCenter, I was thinking that they were, he was going to announce live from, uh, from Arizona, where he's from. Uh, but when he was in the studio, given that you know, you're talking about USC and UCLA, and then Duke was the third team, uh, you would think that if he was announcing from Arizona that USC and UCLA may have played more of a role into it. But announcing from the studios on the East Coast means that he was on his way to Durham. Um, and, and I oh, think no, no, that- no, no. Wait, wait. Donald, Donald. He was Go in ahead. an L.A. studio. That was the L.A. Sports Center. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, but I didn't yeah. even think about. It. There were there were a lot of people. There were a lot of people worried. Sorry, there were a lot of people worried because they were like, "Oh, it's an 11 p.m. announcement from Los Angeles. How right. can he? You know, he's not in prime time on the East Coast. How can he pick an East Coast team sitting in Los Angeles? Uh, you know, in Pacific time zone prime time. But he did it anyway. So I'm thinking, you know. Some nights on Sports Center, uh, the eleven o'clock show is the is the one from Durham. I'm not the, from Durham, from Bristol, because it's right before right. Um, Scott Van Pelt does it at night, and then they kick it to L.A. So it didn't even occur to me that that was in L.A. And you're right, it was. But just the fact that it was on Sports Center, I was like, if he's in the studio, it's a wrap going to Duke. Um, but it's a great feeling to get to you know for him to cl- uh, reclassify and join what is now a loaded squad again. And it, it, you bring all that excitement back to Durham like, once again. Um, and, and I think the, I, I want to talk about the, the uh, fairy thing in just a second, but I think the announcements that we've seen over the years have kind of gotten really creative. And I, you know what, part of me thought it was kind of cool for a dude to just come up on sports center and just say, Hey, here are my three schools and I'm picking one of them right now. Um, kind of going back to the, the, you know, a more traditional way of announcing. Um, I was just watching. It's still going. It's still going on until about maybe five minutes before we get on. Um, he had his family on. They all had Duke shirts and stuff. His family, uh, I guess, his dad's side of the family is from Durham. Um, his dad grew up in Durham or lived a lot in Durham, so he has. He's going to have a lot of family, uh, and that probably played a lot into his decision uh, to go to Duke as well. But finally, the fairy thing. Just the fact that fairy. That's a class act right there to, you know, say, hey, you know, I know my jersey's been retired for about 20 years now, but this is a special talent, a special player, and, and he can, uh, he, he has uh, every reason to want to wear that jersey. So I think that means that this kid is going to show out. He's going to really perform well because you're going to, you're not only doing, when you take someone's number out of the rafters, that's a special talent, but it's also a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure. Um, so I think that, they wouldn't do that for Bagley if they didn't think he could handle it. And I'm really excited to see what he can do. You know, I, the, the retired Jersey thing is interesting because um, I think we've said for a few years that at a certain point, <laughs> something like this is going to have to happen because we're, it seems like every year we trot out a new team that is wearing all the same jerseys, Jersey numbers, we, because they're yeah, we've talked about this left. on the podcast. I think last yeah. year when we were talking about uh players taking zero and one and that like yeah. two was kind of was was held and and whether five was available and stuff like that but yeah it's it's and yeah. and and you know what i think this was actually a, a a cool way to kind of break that tradition um you know they we talked about it i think with jabari parker briefly potentially um but but this this is a this is a cool one you know if uh if all these reports are correct that that bagley is as special as as everybody says he is um Sounds like he's a worthwhile player to be taking Danny Ferry's number, and that sounds like they play a similar position. And I'll I'll turn it over to Jason in a second for the official DBR podcast scouting report. Um, <laughs> one, just one more. No, I, I wasn't actually watching on on Sports Center because I, I I don't have the stomach for it. Um, but I I was following on Twitter, which was fun. Um, discovered that I have that I follow a lot of folks on Twitter who are. Duke or ACC related who also don't regularly watch SportsCenter and were mostly complaining about it. Um, 
So, eh, oh well. Uh, one last note on Danny Ferry. Uh, Jason mentioned that, that he and Danny Ferry um, graduated Duke together, uh, which I, I and I was trying to look this up while you guys were talking and couldn't actually get the official commencement date, but I'm going to assume based on uh, recent Duke tradition that you guys would have, um, you guys would have uh, graduated together the same week that I was born. So Jason Evans, uh, recruiting specialist, <laughs> DBR podcast recruiting specialist, go ahead, give us the <laughs> scouting report on Marvin Bagley, the third. Yo, he, Jason, he just said that you old. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I may be old, but I feel young again today. Getting that's a guy the, like this. That's that, and that that's the kind of enthusiasm we need here. So, 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 tell go. me, tell go. me what kind of, tell me what kind of player Marvin Bagley is. Um, it's not enough to say he's special. Uh, it is, it is pretty widely believed um, that had Marvin Bagley been available in the NBA draft right now this year. I mean, you know, two months ago when when Jason Tatum and and Markel Fultz and the other guys went and Lonzo Ball went at the very top of the draft, that if Marvin Bagley had been available, that he would have gone ahead of all of them, that the NBA, uh, the NBA believes that this guy is the best high school prospect they've seen since. And and what's the since going to be? You know, who am I going to go back to since LeBron James? I'm deadly so, serious about that. They so say better, that he's better than Anthony Davis. He's better he's than better Greg than, Oden. Yes. 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 The the consensus is that Marvin Bagley III is the best high school prospect, the most NBA ready. Actually, m- most of the scouts put it that way. The most NBA ready high school prospect since LeBron James. I want to let that sink in for a moment. This guy's ridiculously good, ridiculously skilled for a you know, six eleven big man. Um, he, he's not going to be a traditional stretch four who's going to go out and shoot three pointers. Um, uh, he's someone who he's great within like fifteen to eighteen feet. Um, I mean, like beyond great. Uh, he, he has an array of post moves, and he's especially good with a hook shot. You get him the ball in the post, he'll take hook shots over any defender, and he just hits them all the time. And by any defender, two weeks ago, Marvin Bagley III was playing against legit NBA players in the Drew League, which uh-huh. is the big league that they have in, in Los Angeles every summer. He was playing on a team with, with James Harden. I mean, think about that. And James Harden reportedly told people that he wants Houston to do whatever they can to find us somehow find a way to get Marvin Bagley the third. James Harden said that this guy's coming to Duke. Um, uh, he he has pretty good handle, you know, for a guy his size. He handles the ball fairly well. He's a good, not a great passer. He's a dynamite rebounder. He has one. He's one of these guys who has an incredible feel for where the ball is going, and he he really sucks up rebounds really nicely. He's a very good shot blocker, and he's supposed to be a very good defender. Very athletic and quick and nimble on his feet. I, I mean, what you're mostly going to get from him is if you get him the ball inside of 15 feet, he's almost unstoppable. Um, that's how good he is on offense. That's the array of moves that he has on offense. And it's not like, you know, I feel sort of like I'm describing Jalil Okafor. Um, It's not like Okafor who was sit down in the post with a huge butt and and destroy you with post moves. Uh, It's a little more of a slasher, a little more, a lot more athletic than Okafor. Um, That's what you're going to get from Marvin Bagley III. Uh, And, and again, the, the scouts are saying uh, this guy was the number one player in the class of 2018. Now that he's reclassified to 2017, they say he's absolutely the number one player in this class as well. Um, he's he's just a dynamite, amazing talent, and he's going to fit in so well with what Duke currently has. I mean, the notion of him playing alongside uh, Wendell Carter, um, who's another very versatile big man like he is. The no, uh, you know. How how will you defend those two guys at the same time? You can't defend either one of them straight up. You have to give help. If you give help, the other one's going to be open. Uh, uh, it, it, he's he's going to be such a beautiful fit with this Duke team. Gives us a little more depth. I think depth was something people were concerned about with Duke. We really had five guys that we felt great about. Um, and then some sort of question marks. Well, this gets us to six that you feel really great about. And those question marks, if suddenly they're playing the seventh, eighth, ninth man, it's a lot easier than if they're suddenly, if they were forced to play the sixth man. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly excited. Like I said, this probably puts Duke as a preseason number one or number two team. Do- Donald, I think you've seen Bagley play a little bit as well. You've scouted him a bit. What, you, was I right? Was I wrong? No, you're pretty much on point. I, I saw a lot of them. Uh, most of what I saw was a little bit during the season, but I saw a lot of his um, uh, games during the Drew League, um, the, the games you mentioned where he was playing with James Harden. Um, one of the things that he has, he like you said, he's not going to shoot the three a lot, but he can knock it down. So it's not like he has a range that's limited to you know the 15 to 18 foot range. He can stretch it out a little bit more, but his game is really centered, like you said, around that jump hook that he has that's just unstoppable. Uh, I don't understand. Like It's almost like everyone knows that he's going to do it, and he still is able to make it happen every single time uh, if he wanted to. Uh, I think the one thing that really just shakes defenders and, and people plan for it, but they really can't, is that he's left-handed. And he just somehow – <clears throat> is able to make these plays and it makes you forget he's left-handed at some point at some times. And by the time you remember he's blown by you and it's probably dunking all over somebody on your team. Um, but this guy is just going to be one of those great players to watch. He's very fluid with the ball. Um, he can drive. Um, there's a lot of times where in the Drew league, he would take the ball. He'd fake a three, he'd hit a three pointer next time down the floor. He'd fake a three pointer and then drive and basically like, lay it in off the glass or, or tomahawk it over somebody. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those games that you, you, it's not raw. It's very polished. And you could tell, like you said, he's very NBA ready. He has a lot of NBA game in him, but it's not the, the selfish game that a lot of people kind of use, use that uh, term NBA game as a, as a downgrade. It's not for him. It's going to be very, very smooth. And you're gonna, it's going to be beautiful to watch. You, you know, uh, you, you use the word, uh, when I watch Marvin Bagley play, smooth is the word that smooth and fluid are yeah. the things that come to mind. Uh, for a guy who's near, he's not quite seven feet. I think he's just a hair under seven feet. For a guy who's nearly seven feet, the fluidity in his game is really, it, it's, you're, you're right. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous to watch. Um, I'm I'm so I'm so excited right now. I'm so glad we're doing this podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, 15 minutes after the announcement, because my my blood is pumped, and and I, I wouldn't be able to. It's midnight on the East Coast. I wouldn't be able to go to sleep anyway. <laughs> How happy do you think Trayvon Duval is right now? He's like, oh my god. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna throw the ball up, and four people are gonna decide which one is gonna dunk it. Oh, well, god, it's just so much <laughs> fun. Other than well, Trayvon Duval is excited. I'm not sure how how psyched uh, Javon Delorier and. Uh, and Marquise Bolden are, but eh, it's okay. Um, uh, Bolden, hold on. Bolden is still going to get plenty of time. I'm sure. absolutely convinced of that. Delorier, we had this discussion last time. <laughs> right. Last well, time, folks, go back to the previous podcast for for Sam and I arguing with each other about Javin Delorier's playing time. <laughs> hey, I will say, I will say though, on, on if you follow Duke ba- the Duke basketball uh, Twitter account and their Instagram, they always post little little nugget videos. Uh, every single day. And if you just tuned tune in for the first time and you're like, hey, I'm going to go to this web page, go to their, their account and see who's really their star. It's every day they post something from Delorier. Every single day he has a dunk or he has something where they're like, yep, Jab did it again. So I don't know. He might be getting a little more playing time than we may. We were discounting him kind of a couple weeks ago or a couple few weeks ago, but he might be getting a little bit more playing time based on, you know, what we've seen or what they're like highlighting for practices. Well, so, I also think, Sam, you can go in half a second. I also think Deloria is going to get more playing time because I think there are going to be a lot of games where Duke can be pretty comfortably, uh, not like blowout, but comfortably ahead, um, you know, by halftime. And it's going to be a lot easier for Kay to feel like he can work guys in. Yeah. So, so speaking of Jason's unbridled optimism about Duke, um, that's not a transition. I, I just wanted to note, uh, that Jason is still on brand. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to. I wanted to quickly touch on a couple other, uh, a couple other items here. Um, first, also being a recruiting note um, that this weekend Duke also gained a commitment from another five-star recruit who is remaining in the 2018 class. He's a name that uh, Duke fans may already be familiar with because his older brother played at Duke uh, briefly, although he won a national championship. The older brother being Tyus Jones, the brother who just committed being Trey Jones. He's a point guard in the 2018 class. Uh, Last I checked, I believe 
247 sports has him as the top point guard in that class, um, somewhere in the five to 10 ish range. So not the very top of the class, um, but, but perhaps right behind, um, that, that group of, of very top guys. So, um, I, Donald or Jason, have either of you gotten to see Trey Jones at all? Um, and can you tell us about him, um, in light of, of his recent commitment to Duke, which it feels unfortunately now, uh, for him is like, it's being, uh, pretty significantly overshadowed by Bagley. Uh, I, before Jason kicks in, cause I think he's probably seen him a few more times than I have. Um, I, I was so excited about this yesterday and it wasn't necessarily because of his game. Cause I think his game is really good. Um, and I think he's going to be a pretty smooth player. I, I think it's really like you're keeping it in the family. And like, I like, tr- you know, Ty Jones is, you know, Tyus was one of my favorite players of the last like 10 years at Duke and to see his brother come and see how excited he was and just kind of him, you know, he kind of went on a rant basically saying like, you know, my brother is better than I am guys. So Duke, you're getting a great player. Um, did you, Donald, did, did you, you see, the did video? you see the, the, did you see the commitment video? No, I didn't. I didn't. It was, oh, Donald, come I, on. I really? Yeah, I didn't I, see it. It's I was, great. I was it's awesome. Awesome. I'm going to I'm go almost back to wondering, I'm wondering. I'm almost wondering if it would make for good content right here on the show to just have Donald watch it right now. And, <laughs> and no, wait, here's like, okay, Jason, Jason, you There's talk. Good... You talk. I'm going to go look this up. All right. Donald's going to watch the video. If you haven't watched it, if you haven't watched it, um, I believe you put it on Twitter. I don't know what other platforms you put it on. It's also um, on YouTube. It's also on YouTube. It's also on and YouTube. Fact, so just yeah, do, do your yeah. do yourself a a favor unless you're listening to this show while you're uh, driving a motor vehicle or operating heavy machinery, in which case don't. But uh, if you are able to uh, grab your phone or whatever device you're on and and just look up Trey Jones commitment video, Duke, whatever it is. Um, go find it while Donald's also watching it and then come back and listen to our reaction. Jason, uh, <laughs> while, while I'm stalling for Donald, you want to tell me a little more about Trey Jones? Sure. Uh, by the way, I can't wait. Donald's going to come back and he's going to be like, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> I'm still looking. I'm still looking. All right. <laughs> it's a great, it's a, it's a really good commitment video. Uh, I'll wait till Donald sees it and he can, he can tell you what his thoughts on it are, but uh, this is a great pickup for Duke. Trey Jones is a, uh, a, a really wonderful player, and and yeah, it almost feels like he's part of the the Duke family because uh, because Big Brother Tyus is is certainly a a beloved uh, Blue Devil and, and part of the the Duke family. Um, uh, you know, by the way, um, uh, Trey played um, with Gary Trent Jr. Um, uh, at, uh, in at Apple Valley in Minnesota. Uh, Tyus was there. Gary Trent Jr. was there. Uh, and and now how, Trey how was there. badly how badly did did the team of Trey Jones and Gary Trent Jr. just destroy other teams in Minnesota? Yeah, yeah, exactly. in, yeah, in, in, in Minnesota high school basketball, <laughs> right. which I don't right. think is quite the hotbed um, of, well, of of high school hoops. I, I will admit I haven't really studied the the best of the best of the Minnesota player of all time players from Minnesota, but um, <laughs> I think it's a pretty safe bet. Uh, Tyus was a top five, top 10 recruit. Uh, Gary Trent was a top five, top 10 recruit. Um, uh, Trey Jones is a, is a top 10 recruit. Uh, Minnesota doesn't produce a lot of top 10 recruits. So that's three of them in the past four years. Um, how much does how Minnesota badly, hate how, Duke? I was going to say, how much, <laughs> we how keep much does taking, Richard I mean, Richard no, Pitino, hate. Richard Pitino, yeah. the head coach, Rick Pitino's oh. son, the head coach at the University of Minnesota. Um, who's really trying to build a program there. And he, he, you know, they're in the big 10 and he's making them more and more relevant and props Richard. Cause you're doing a pretty decent job, but he must just be punching the wall, pissed off. Every time there's a great local product, the kid goes to Duke. And, and it's not like, <laughs> and it's not like that. I mean, you know, Wisconsin's not that far away as far as like really strong local programs. Um, but man, you got to figure yeah. that if you're, if you're the head coach at Minnesota and you have kids in the Minneapolis Metro area, who are coming up, who are big stars, like got to be able to get one of the top 10 guys who cut one of the right. three top 10 guys exactly. who cut through in a four year period. Oh, well, uh, so, uh, so let me really, yeah, hold let on, me really quick on, tell hold folks on, about, hold up, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, oh Do- Donald seen the video. Right. Donald seen the live. video. This, guys, this is, this is Donald Wine's live reaction <laughs> to the Trey Jones commitment video. Donald, take it away. Sir. What? That was amazing. That was a great video. <laughs> holy, <laughs> holy. Donald, are you, Excellent. Donald, are, you, are you crying? I you know crying? that that was so dope. Wasn't it awesome? And Ty's coming out. He didn't even. This is also thing. He didn't reveal it. 
Tyus did. That's yeah. so awesome. Yes. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes, he gets okay. Tyus. And, and the passing of the ball from the big brother to the little brother yeah. on the Duke court, it's like, oh, my God. Awesome. And it's like, it's like, it's your time now. Like, I had my time. In the brotherhood, the brotherhood shirts, yo, look, okay, rant time. Duke, listen, I need you to start selling these brotherhood shirts, okay? I understand that it's something that you want to keep internal, you want to keep within the family, but I'm telling you, if you want to make all of the money this year, not just some, not like most, if you want to make all of the money, just put these brotherhood shirts on sale. You can make, you can make them $50. I don't care. I'm going to buy one. I might buy three. My dad will buy one. My brother will buy one. I might buy one from other people. It's not just, I, just brotherhood it is not quite. It's not. I don't think it's a, quite as good of a brand as as Duke football's Duke Gang brand. Um, shout out to Duke Gang. Uh, hey, but but I'm with rant. you. Duke Gang, make those shirts too. I, I didn't get one when I worked for the team. Just just yeah. send it to me. I, I, I'm, I'll DM you my address. I'm, I'm I'm in for the Duke I, Gang I, shirts, guys, but but the brotherhood's very guys, strong. I, I want, wait, I, we gotta we gotta tie all this back together. Um, Sam, I know you weren't watching ESPN. Donald, you were. When, when Marvin Bagley announces for Duke and they say, hey, Marvin, why Duke? What was the first word out of his mouth? Brotherhood. He said the brotherhood. Like, he knew, he's on brand already. Mm-hmm. He knew it. Uh, and, and that's clearly something that Coach K and, and his chief recruiting assistant, Capel, are, are preaching to people. You are part of a brotherhood here. You're part of a family here. And it's clearly working. Or, or, I mean, just the fact that they're, you're walking in, in on any given day, you can walk into that training facility and some, someone is back. Someone's back either working out or they're, they're talking to one of the coaches or they're just practicing or just shooting buckets. It's like that, you know, it's more than a brother. It's, it's their home. Like it's their home gym. That's where a lot of them train in the off season that, you know, they do the camps, but they're also training. And I think that is something that is very easy to buy into um, especially when you, when you, it's not like some schools you're like, all right, I'm here. I'm going to do my one year of, 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 you know, servitude and I'm going to go to the, go to the NBA people. When those guys come back, those players see that. And I think that is really easy to buy into the fact that these guys are coming back because they love Durham. They love Duke university. And I think that is what's selling a lot of these recruits. I'm also, Hey, hey guys, I, I'm impressed with the, I just want to note real quick. I'm impressed with with the new recruits that they are maintaining Duke's recent tradition of really great hair. Um, as, a, <laughs> as a mostly hairless person, I, I'm 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 very, I'm very impressed by them. Sorry, Jason, uh, you were saying. It, yeah, I just wanted to really quick just to give him his props. I want to go back and and give folks the quick scouting report just to let them know about Trey Jones because because this kid deserves uh, a little you know his his moments here. Um, uh, and first of all, people, just so we're clear. Um, Marvin Bagley III arriving on Duke's campus within a few days. We'll be playing in the most in the upcoming season. Trey Jones, another year away. He's he's a rising high school senior, um, or I guess depending on high school, maybe already started. He's a high school senior. Um, uh, Bagley is is coming directly to Duke. So d- not to be confused about why is this guy not here yet? Why are they talking about him when he's not here? He'll be here in a year. Um, but it's a darn good thing he's going to be here in a year because Trevon Duval is probably not going to be here in a year. He's probably a one and done prospect at point guard. And and um, I think Coach K is going to have no qualms at all about handing the ball to Tyus Jones, his younger brother, Trey Jones, who, like his big brother, is a really, really slick ball handler, sees the floor very, very, very well. Um, Pot just piles up the assists. Uh, Trey Jones was considered like maybe a, a top 25, top 30 kind of recruit um, four or five months ago. And then he just blew up this summer. He had an incredible, he had, you know, he was arguably one of the top five players, higher AAU circuit um, this spring and summer. And, and one of the major reasons why was because he did such a great job distributing the ball. He played on the Howard Pulley AAU team. They, they, they went almost undefeated um, in, in, playing in, in the very, very elite AAU summer um, or sorry, spring tournaments that they were in. Uh, and, and he was a major, he was the best player in the team and a major, major reason why with his ability to see the floor to, to, to distribute the ball. Now, in terms of how he's different from Tyus, because they are not the same player, he's going to be a little more athletic. He's, he's certainly better at taking the ball into the lane, taking it to the hole. 
um, uh, hitting, uh, you know, doing pull-up jumpers and things like that. Uh, you're going to see much more of that from him than you did from Tyus, who tended to stay a little more on the perimeter um, than than Trey really will. Now, the downside of that is Tyus is a better Tyus. Uh, clearly appears to be a a better three point shooter than Trey. Trey's not bad, but he's not great from three point range. Tyus uh, was was obviously you know really really nice, a really nice outside stroke, a great outside stroke. And and Trey's not quite as good of an outside shooter as Tyus. Although some say, you know, Trey being a little more athletic, a, a little bit taller. Um, uh, th- 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 sure that Trey's a bit more of a scorer than Tyus is. Uh, or Tyus was um, there. There's there's uh, people are unsure defensively. I, I've I've read some scouting reports. I mean, look, I I haven't been to enough AAU games to know <laughs> how good these guys are um, defensively. But the scouting reports say that Trey may be a little better defender than Tyus was as well, which is which is all really really good to hear. But um, uh, he's he's going to be a, a special player. Um, uh, by all accounts, he's he's going to be the point guard from day one for Duke. And and also importantly, he is very, very good friends with several other high, high quality players in the class of 2018, Cameron Reddish and Darius Garland, who are also top 10 players in that class. They're top 10 perimeter players. The three of them have have talked about the possibility of playing together. And um, and now that Trey's at Duke, if they want to play together, it could only be in the Blue Devil Blue. So I wanted to, uh, before we wrap up, um, wanted to quickly acknowledge just the, the last bit of news, which, which isn't as fun as the recruiting stuff uh, out of Duke this week. So the team um, canceled the Dominican Republic trip that they were planning to be on like right now. Um, it was as a result uh, per their press release that uh, of Duke, uh, because Coach K had to have uh, another knee surgery. Um, so we here at the DBR podcast and, and all of the folks at Duke basketball report, wish coach K a speedy and healthy, uh, and, and complete recovery. Uh, it sounds like he's going to be off his feet a little bit, um, but that he'll be back on the sidelines by the time the season starts in October. Um, so it's a shame that they couldn't go on the trip, but, um, uh, better to have coach K healthy and back on the sidelines and able to prowl around than than not. Um, and. And it also sounds like they're, you know, even if the coaches aren't around, the players are going to get a little bit more time with Marvin Bagley on campus um, because he wasn't going to be able to come on the DR trip. Um, Donald, any additional thoughts on Coach K and the and sort of the lead up to the season? No, you know, Coach K, uh, they they posted a video from him when he uh, when he just when he announced that they were canceling the trip because of a surgery, and it sounded like you know he he's always one of those coaches that you know. For you know, put all the haters aside, he's always one of those coaches that when he announces something, he announces it from a perspective uh, of him, and 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 not and, and this not in a bad way. What he did was he said, "I was not at a hundred percent. I was not giving my players a hundred percent. They were giving me a hundred percent, and they uh, they deserved for me to be at my best. And that's why he decided to have the surgery now, um, so that he would be ready for the start of practice. So I think that it, it you know it's one of those things where he probably toughed it out for three days and, and the doctor said, Hey, let's just go ahead and clean this up um, so that you're ready for the season. And it's not really hot affecting the season. Um, you know, we've seen this in the last couple of years we've had where he's had to sit out for, uh, for his back. Um, so I'm sure he, that went through and played a little bit into him uh, getting this done now. So I think it's good. And, and at the same time, like you said, um, with recent events, now we have Bagley and he wouldn't have been on this trip. Now we have a chance to work him into the, to the fold so that by the time practice does open up, we have a full team and, and it's not, uh, uh, I mean, obviously he's going to play catch up a little bit. He's got to enroll in classes. He's got to get ready for the, uh, for the start of classes, which are, are, are very soon. Uh, and then at the same time, he's going to catch up and br- get up to speed with all his teammates. I think that part is going to be pretty easy. Um, and, and at the end of the day, when we, we want everybody at hundred percent when the season starts and that includes our coaching staff. So, uh, like you said, coach, get well, and uh, we'll see you back there soon. But in in the meantime, um, to to tie this back really quick, in the meantime, the team is in totally capable hands because one minute ago on Twitter, it is ten fifteen Mountain Time, so I guess it's twelve fifteen Eastern Time on Monday night. Uh, Jeff, one minute ago, Jeff Capel tweeted out hashtag the Brotherhood with a GIF of Doctor Evil and Mini Me, um, and. Uh, so, so things are really good, even even when Coach K is not there. Jason, did you have anything to add? There, there are going to be folks out there 
who say that Duke canceled the Dominican Republic because they knew that Marvin Bagley was about to commit and they didn't want to do a major team activity, a team bonding thing um, uh, without this guy who's clearly going to be a key part of the team. Um, there, there have been all kinds of conspiracy theories, uh, even among, you know, folks who are Duke supporters about, um, you know, the canceling of this, of this trip. Um, I, I would just like to say to these silly people that, yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. I think Duke knew Bagley was coming and I think they canceled this trip because they want Bagley to be a part of everything and suckers, we got you all. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I I'm, think, I'm, you know I'm, what, I'm, I'm all, all in for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm here in. for this, Betty. Okay. You know, I'm usually I'm usually the voice of reason. I'm not going to be the voice of reason right now. Hey. I think Coach K knew what was happening. He knew what was going on. He knew he needed knee surgery. And he went, ah, you know what? We don't need to go to the Dominican Republic because as soon as this kid arrives on campus in a few days, I need him a part of the program. Hey, and 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 if the man is good enough to manipulate even his own health in this way, um, he's operating on a totally different level. <laughs> so... I'm, um, I, you know, when I, when I come down off this, when I come down off this Bagley high, I will probably say, Jason, why did you say those silly things? Because I'm, again, I am the non-conspiracy theory guy, but but for the moment, <laughs> that's just hey, who hey, I am. So it's fine. Heck? It's fine to dabble a little bit in conspiracy theory. Just don't get, just don't go too deep. You know. Yeah, you got to um, see how the other side lives. Just sure. so you keep, you got to keep your stuff quick. <laughs> exactly. Hey, let's uh, let's finish up with parting shots here. Um, not sure if you guys had anything prepared for this. I, this podcast was, I'd say it was planned, but not not quite to the level of detail, I think, that we normally do. Um, so, Donald, did you have anything before we wrap up here this evening? No, uh, I'm very lo- very much looking forward to um, the announcement of the basketball schedule, which we probably would expect in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and right around the same time, it's going to be football season, guys. So I think the next podcast, we'll probably dive into some football, yeah? I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope so. Jason, anything, uh, any parting shots for today? Guys, I most assuredly have a parting shot. Um, uh, we are sitting here, at, well, it's past midnight now, so it's Tuesday. So in one more day on Wednesday, but really mostly on Thursday, on Wednesday and Thursday in the city of Nashville, um, the uh, NCAA's Committee on Infractions will hear the case against um, UNC. They will hear five allegations. Among those allegations are a lack of institutional control. Um, uh, there are seven members of the infractions committee who will hear those infra- who will hear those allegations. Uh, uh, among the folks who will be there, um, uh, many many lawyers and representatives of UNC, including um, the head football coach and the head basketball coach. Um, uh, this is a really 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 important moment for the future of the NCAA. Uh, I, I firmly believe that um, North Carolina committed uh, a, a horrible uh, affront, uh, assault on, on the very foundation of what the NCAA is all about, the notion of the student athlete. Um, Carolina took the student part and tossed it aside. Um, they did that for two decades. And uh, this is their moment before the judge and jury. Um, judge and jury being one and the same. And uh, I, I, I know there may be people out there who expect that we will hear reports about what happens in this in the infractions committee meeting. Um, my bet is that we probably won't. Uh, typically, they, they keep these things very closed, very quiet. Uh, I, I would imagine if UNC thinks things went really, really well for them, we may get some leaks from the Carolina side about how well it went. But if we hear nothing, I think that will mean that Carolina got hammered and slammed by the committee punishments. The committee will not announce punishments. They will consider what happens, uh, what is said by both the investigators, you know, the, the enforcement folks and by UNC and their defense. And, uh, and then the committee will, will issue a ruling hard to say, you know, two, four, six weeks or so from now, probably. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have ranted and raved against UNC uh, as much as I can at the moment. Okay. In the past, I mean. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> th- this is, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I've, I, I just want to say I'm, I'm remaining calm right now because, like I said, it's an important moment in NCAA history. Uh, th- we've, we've been doing this show for almost, we're coming up on the 
on three years of us being on this program. And when we first started, I think one of our, I think it was our second guest we ever had on the show um, was, was the uh, news and observer reporter who was deep diving into all of this stuff. And we still don't have resolution on any of the uh, UNC infractions. So look, I'll, I'll make a plea to NCAA. Look, we we all love Jason's uh, rants about UNC, but I know you don't. So if you don't want to see him go postal on you, uh, and then on a future podcast, you might want to do the right thing and just just lower the boom on UNC. Because because Donald, you and I are very happy to sit here, um, we, we meet our phones, it. and and lay back and just enjoy we have it all whole, year. We might have a year long podcast where it's just Jason ranting. Um, yeah, but I don't think anybody love- wants that. <laughs> uh, hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this up here. I uh, my parting shot this week. I just wanted to give a shout out to my friend Stephen, who was a Duke friend of mine, uh, whose wedding I attended this weekend, and so I got to see a lot of my uh, my old uh, Duke friends, and it was a lot of fun. So um, that was that. Uh, once again, best wishes to Coach K. Uh, speedy recovery from your knee surgery. Um, all else seems to be rolling right along here in Duke land. Uh, Like Donald said, I think we should have some preseason football content coming at you soon. Um, No exact details for that yet, uh, but football season is right around the corner. So uh, for Jason Evans, for Donald Wine, I'm Sam Klein. This was episode 80 of the Duke Basketball Report podcast. Duke band, take us home.